Well, thank you guys. Uh, last week was really fun. I had, um, Rachel and I celebrated 11 years of... Yeah! yeah. yeah. Great. We got to go watch, uh, got to watch Avengers in the movie theater. Oh, nice. And you guys, if you haven't been to the Sun Prairie movie theater, you know, yeah. watch a good movie. But if you go, they have, they can, like, they have a couple different theaters, we didn't know this, where they, like, wait on you, like, they have wait staff. So we're, like, sitting there, we got a little call button there, and it felt really fancy. <laughs> We, we like that kind of stuff. I kind of like that kind of stuff. Then we got to see some comments, so that was good too. But um, always fun to reflect on who God is and what He's done in your lives too. Really so take that time too. I think about the last year, and we're parents now. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And, and we're like doing decent at it. We're like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> you got to learn new things all the time. That's for sure. Yesterday I learned that uh, jumping around on trampolines causes you to use muscles in your body that you don't normally use. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we were at the trampoline strong. park yesterday and I'm feeling a little stiff, but uh, it's good. God is good too, and I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I love talking, uh, hearing, coming in and hearing Kevin talk about missional community because we believe as a church that we're a family of servant missionaries, and, and we can't be family if I only see you guys once a week. And we can't, we, you know, family, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way, right? Yeah. We've got to know each other. So when we come together in times of prayer, uh, we don't want, like, just pray for my week. Or, or I really I really don't like unspoken prayers. Like, you know, I got something. Can you just pray for me? It's unspoken. Yeah. Why? Because, man, if we're family, man, I want to know your pain. So I can be with you. I can go to the depth of the pain with you. I can mourn with you. I can rejoice with you. Man, if you're hurting, man, I can... <clears throat> And, and that's what a family does. We hurt together, we walk together, we live together. We, we see the ugly together. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, come on, right? You know, when you're family, yeah. you know. You know, that's why sometimes family reunions keep them together. Sometimes it's hard because it's like, yeah, I know how. I know what you did last year. I know what you said about how. You know, but, but that's all right, though. That's how we work together. And as a body of Christ, a little bit different than a natural family, as a body of Christ, then we have Jesus in us. And we think they're like, you know what? I see that ugly. And I have some, I have, I have a revelation from Jesus for you to help that ugly yeah. get away, you know? Right. And, and that's what the body, that's what God does. And not only he has his Holy Spirit, he has his word. This morning we'll be here from his word. But he also puts us in a family, a body of believers, so that all of us can be watching out for each other. And, and together, lift each other up so that we look more like Jesus. Amen. So that we look more like him. And so today, uh, we're going to be turning to John chapter 15, maybe a familiar passage. I, I love, um, yeah, I love uh, preaching on Sunday morning, and, and I love the group that God, uh, the family that God has brought together. And sometimes I start off with saying that as a familiar passage, maybe I shouldn't say that, and maybe not a familiar passage for you. But John 15 is an amazing passage, nonetheless, whether you know it or whether you, you're not. And in it today, we're going to walk through a little bit verse by verse. We're going to dig some truth out of, of the Word, and then at the end, uh, I'm hoping to apply it and bring some revelation and some application to say, how, how will it be true of us as individuals and as a family that we would abide with Christ, that we would remain in Him? And how will this affect our life? Why is it a good thing, a celebratory thing, that Jesus invites us to abide in Him? Again and again, every time I read Scripture, I'm, I'm, I marvel at this truth that God wants the best for us. Yeah, you know that? His ways, is, he says in the Old Testament, his ways are higher than ours. His ways are always better than ours. And sometimes it causes me to have an oh my moment. <laughs> Do you guys have those moments? Oh my moment? Like I'm reading the scripture and I'm like, oh my. I'm not like that. <laughs> right? And this may be a passage where I say, oh my, uh, I'm not like that. But then I get my eyes fixed on the fact that Jesus, what you're saying to me is better than what I'm currently in. And so then I'm like, oh yes, I want that. Yes, God. I see that in obedience to you, all of a sudden my life changes. And it's always, and I say this maybe every week, but it's always better. What he asks of me is always better than where I find myself. And so if we're convinced of that truth, then as we walk through his word, it is there's moments of conviction, right? But it's always a conviction that he, hopefully we become like um, 
comforted by his conviction, welcoming his work, welcoming that, that nudge, that oh my moment. It's like, wow, it's good because I know when I receive that, when I apply it to my life, when I hold it within me and I adhere to it and it becomes one with me and I with it, it's going to be good. It's going to be better. We have to have that. We have to have that mindset whenever we're reading the Word of God. It's always going to be better for me. And, and in that, I can continue to walk towards Him and walk towards His character and adapt Himself, His ways to me, so that. And we're reading uh, reading this passage today, so that God gets max glory. Why is it that we walk with Him? Why is it that we love His conviction? Why is it that we love the Holy Spirit and we want to hear His voice? Why is it that when we sing about His presence, I'm like, yes, Lord, show me Your presence, show me Your glory or Your character. Why is it? Because I know that as, as I be, receive His glory, as I receive His conviction, as I receive His word, as I eat of, his, uh, of the bread of life, as I do all this, uh, my life transforms into the character of God. And then all of a sudden, God receives glory because now I have been obedient to Him. Yes. He gets magnified in my life. And, uh, there's so many truths. I'm getting, I'm getting like, I'm like going ahead already. So let's get to the Word of God. Let's read the Word of God. And, and I'm hoping uh, as a group, um, our group, we, we said, you know what? This week we're going to read the Word of God together and we're challenging each other as we read the, God, the Word of God to ask ourselves, God, what do I need to change so that would look more like you. Typically, we started this week, we're looking at the prayers of Jesus. I mean, that, that's a way to change my life, is to look at Jesus, how Jesus prayed. I'm like, wow, God, I'm a little selfish in my prayers. Lord, help me, to Jesus, to be like you in my time of prayer. So, again, I'm going to read John chapter 15. And as I read John chapter, chapter 15, have in your mind, have in your spirit that question, how can I change so that I would look more like you? That's going to be the theme today. How can I change that I would look more like you? So let's look. John chapter 15 says this. I am the true vine. This is Jesus talking. Maybe your Bible has red words in it. Mine does. Uh, I remember I got my ESV version. So I'm going to read that today. Uh, <laughs> and my son changed where I was. John chapter 16. This is what happened. The first Sunday, I'm going to use my iPad to read my Bible. All right, there you go. John chapter 15, verse 1. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may be more fruitful. Already you are clean because of the words that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you unless you abide in me. Yeah. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And branches are gathered, and they're thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. Verse 8. By this my Father is glorified, that you would bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in that love. If, I, if you keep my commands, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands, and I abide in His love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy would be full. Amen? Amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, we thank you for your word. Jesus, we are grateful. We are grateful for you. We are grateful for you. Yes. We know that from your mouth comes the words of life. You alone have the words of eternal life. And so, Father, this morning we ask that your Holy Spirit would be present with us to speak to us the unknown truths of your word, that there would be moments of revelations to us. Father, we thank you that you have an uh, open invitation for us to come and be a part of who you are. God, I pray that as we hear your truths this morning, God, that we would adapt to them, we would adhere to them, but we would abide by them. 
And Father Lord, it would forever change our lives as we, Father, die to ourselves and Father, pick up this glorious purpose, Father, of showing your character, giving you glory with all of our lives. Yes. Father, help that to be what we're all about. Because Jesus, that's what you're all about. Bringing the Father glory. Father, Lord, may our hearts be submitted to you as we hear your word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Bye-bye. I, I, uh, I was reading, I have two Bibles. I like to study my ESV Bible, or it's electronic form. I thought, now I need to get Father today. It's going to be like an ESV paper Bible, because I like to study and draw in my Bible. Anybody else like to draw in their Bible? All right, anyway. Sorry, that's a little tangent to say. Uh, the word here, abiding, is often sometimes translated as remain. It means the same thing, and I, but I really appreciate the word abide. Anybody know rules to abide by? Mm -hmm. There was a, a fun time, I said I went to the trampoline park yesterday. And they have rules at the trampoline park. Anybody go to go to an amusement park? They have rules at the amusement park. You got you go out and then what? They're for my safety. Why? So when I stay in the middle of whatever rules they are, I can have max fun, right? If I break the rules, then I gotta sit on the sideline. Yesterday was a great example of that. Having a, a little a little son now, I get to learn how the, the joys of of wanting to do the exact same the, the exact thing that we read on the rules said that we can't do, but we really want to do them. But sometimes we go over that boundary. I know, we're, we're all not kids this morning, right? We're all adults and we love rules and we buy by rules and we like, love to live in that. But I, I, even as a kid myself though, I, I really appreciated rules because I knew well, if I stayed in that rule, I could do as much as I wanted within that boundary. I, I'm learning how to parent a son that doesn't really think the same way as I do. And so yesterday at the trampoline park, we kind of had to learn a little bit like, hey, if it says only one person on this thing at a time, then only one person can jump on the trampoline at a time. I think that's a really sensible thing you can have a lot of fun. Anyway, abide by, adhere to, submit to, make a part of you, adapt to. This is what Christ is inviting us to do. I'm going to try not to get to my application in the middle, but I'm so excited about the last part of it. I want to stay. We're here, so we're going to we're going to look at this verse by verse. You're going to you guys can follow me. Uh, John chapter 15 and. In, Verse one. Verse one. Knowing the roles, I am the I am the true vine. I love Jesus' declaration, his boldness to proclaim the truth. I am the way. I am the vine. I am the source. I mean, that alone we can just meditate on that all day long and say, "Where am I going?" And examine ourselves. And say, "Where am I going elsewhere to find my source, my vine, my..." Nourishment, he is that only thing. Declaration of truth. I'm going to tell you, we're going to dig through these verses. There's a whole lot of these truths. I could just do a whole sermon on one of those, right? We're going to find a whole bunch of them. Secondly, my father is a vine dresser. I love this control that the vine dresser has, right? And, and, and it's, it's um, talked about throughout the passage, kind of uh, throughout the, the, this analogy. The vine dresser has control over the garden, over the vineyard. Um, I'm not a great, I don't have a green thumb. I'm not really good with plants, usually plants in my house. Either I water them, actually I was, sorry, that story. Oh, we just recently got a big pot of flowers for Mother's Day, for, for Rachel for Mother's Day. And we're like, oh, what a blessing, right? It's so pretty. Then we thought about all the care that needs to take place. And sometimes I water it, you know, and I water it too much. I found out while I was researching about these plants she got that you can water it too much and it withers, or you can not water it enough and it withers. And both things look the same. And I said, man, that really makes it, it, makes it even more complicated now, right? <laughs> but we are in charge of maintaining this pot and helping it grow. Hopefully it lasts a little longer so that Denver can see his gift to mom is, is significant and it lasts, you know. Anybody out there with green thumb, I know Tammy, we might need some help, uh, but we'll talk later about that. But the vine dresser here, he's in charge of the growth of the vineyard. He is the final say. He is the one that intends for it. 
So it, it's a good thing that we have somebody watching over us. Oh, it's going to get a little bit convicting, but we have somebody that his eyes are always among us, making sure that we are producing fruit, that we are growing. And oftentimes, you find in the, in the next a couple of verses that we'll go into, he also takes time to prune. So he notices when there's an unhealthy growth in our air in, in our lives, and he challenges us and prunes us. And but let's see, oh my. Right? Where he says, oh, Andrew, I'm going to challenge you in this area of patience and time management. And Andrew, you've got, you have some issues in this area. You're not quite like me. And I'm going to take some time. I'm just going to work on this so that, why? So that the nourishment and the energy that you're using in one area is going to go to another area and it's going to produce more fruit for you. Because your eyes are fixed on the wrong thing. Pruning. He's in charge of it. He knows it. And he also knows, we find in a little bit, that he knows when we're wasted, when, we're, no, when we have withered and we have lost our connection. We just went through amazing seasons, right? Go through, and I love Wisconsin that it has full, four full seasons almost. I don't think we had spring this year. I think we just skipped spring. Right? But we, I, I love seeing the seasons as they turn, right? We go from summer into the fall season here. The leaves are turning green. And they, get, they, they lose their nourishment. And then even though in their dying, it looks really beautiful. And they all fall off. But in a, it, it is the, as the vine dresser sees the vine, he sees when there is a connection that has been missed. Hey, we know what's going on inside of us. Our heart has now become content in who we are and what we're doing and in our in ourself, and we have stopped the flow of connection from the very one that says, I am your vine. I am your nourishment. I am where you need to get your source from. Sometimes we find that in ourselves, we'd rather do what we want to do, the way we want to do it, yeah. and we lose that connection, or sometimes we just lose the, 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 the faintness of our heart to go after Him, and we lose that affection. I love the, the scriptures that they, they have so many analogies from, uh, from being a vine, from having affection. We lose our first love, we lose that, we go our own way. Let's look here again, verse 2. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. Well, every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. And we're going to get to a really awesome truth at the very end. And I'm trying to hold it. And like, you know, I want to say it right now. This fruit, he, why is it so desirous that we produce fruit? We cannot be in Christ without bearing fruit. We cannot be in Christ, be in the vine, be in love with Him, as, as a later analogy says again, who cannot without bearing fruit that looks like Him. What, what is this bearing of the fruit? It's the fruit that looks like the character of God. And that is why it brings Him glory. Because our life, as we're in Him, all of a sudden now our actions and our life and everything about us produces the fruit in such that it looks so much like God, it brings God glory. Some of us have been in that situation where we're in our workplace and we're in our neighborhood and we're in our family and, and we're surrounded by people. And they come to us and they say, uh, for me, especially in, a, in one of my seasons of turmoil and Rachel and I, I, we shared our testimony of that season where, where, man, there was turmoil in our marriage. It was disastrous. It was, and in the middle of that, people would look at me sometimes and they would say, Andrew, I don't understand. These are my coworkers. Uh, my, uh, I was on a ministry team at Purdue University. These are my coworkers. So they, they knew the ins and outs of what was happening. They're like, Andrew, but you're so peaceful. I don't understand it. Why? Why can you be having all this thing, and, and but yet you're you just exuberating peace? And I said, no other thing that I'm just crying out to God, and I need you, God, right? 
What were they experiencing in that moment? They said, the fruit of your life, it looks like God. In that moment, I could have said, well, I'm really good, I'm great. No, in that moment, I said, no, it's totally God. I don't want to know any other reason in my life that this fruit is being experienced by you other than the fact that God is in me and you're experiencing Him. And, it, and that is how, again, God gets the glory. Amen. God gets the glory by us abiding and we're going to adhere to Him, submitting to Him, and produces in us His character. And people say, that looks something different. When, I love it when we have uh, extended relatives come over to uh, mom and dad's house. We, we all get together. There was, uh, I remember the particular time where my aunt was sitting in the living room and there was chaos in the house. And good kind of chaos. There's like, you know, you ever been over to a full house? You got like 20 people in the house? It's chaotic, right? I mean, it's good, but it's chaotic. You got the kids running around in the corner. They were banging pots and pans. You got the people at the table. If you've been to my parents' house, you know they got the table, then they got the couch set up. We got like people on the couch, we got the TV on, we got the kids going, we got the conversations here, we got people cooking in the in the in the kitchen. And she was sitting on the couch and just observing everything, and she goes, It's so peaceful here. <laughs> I don't know where you are. I mean, you see that? <laughs> it's so peaceful here. What is it? The, the unbeliever gets around us, and they experience the fruit in our life, the presence of God that was there, and they say, wow, there's something about your life that looks unnatural. It's not supposed to be this way. Everybody should be on the edge of their seat in there. But there's peace. And what is our opportunity in that moment? It's God produced in my life that allows us to have this fruit exhibited. He gets a glory because our life begins to point to Him because there's nothing different, right? You guys know this, right? You guys couldn't agree with me? There's nothing different about our life than the unbeliever's life, I mean, other than the things that we do, right? We go through the same thing, right? We all go to the same workplace. We all have to do the same meals three times a day, hopefully, maybe, you know, maybe you're on a two meal a day diet, I don't know, but, you know, we, we do this, the only thing different in our life is that we've been connected to the vine. Yes. And when we abide in that vine, all of a sudden, our life changes, and that's when God gives the glory. All right, we're only in verse two, come on, let's go. Verse three. <laughs> Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. I don't know if anybody else needs an assurance this morning. Mm -hmm. Already you are clean because of the words I have spoken to you. Can you receive that? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm always, you know, we hear that note, I was question, you know, if God's love, am I in the body? Get Jesus' assurance to it. You are in the body. Amen. You are clean. Mm -hmm. And in in his in his parable, he's he's not uh, he's not trying. His, his purpose here is not a disciplining. It is not a disciplining uh, passage. That's right. This is an invitation passage. This is the assurance passage. I am the vine. You are in me. Be assured of that. Continue in that. <laughs> Because you are clean. I've spoken over you. You have been clean. Now, remain in me because there's more to happen. There's more to be yes. produced. There's more to happen in your life. Remain that you are clean yes. this morning. Receive that word from the Lord. Yeah. And this is what it says. And then again, it goes right into the invitation. Verse 4 Abide in me. You're clean. Come to me. I'm your source. You have been made clean. You have been made well. Come to me. Abide in me, and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Mm -hmm. Jesus' invitation is come and be one with me. Mm -hmm. That's what this invitation is. Come and be one with me. Come and allow me to saturate you so that when people look at you, there's no difference between me and you. We're one, right? Yeah. Wow. Right? 
there's no longer this I, I my way, I way, right? That it's no, we're one. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. You can do nothing apart from Jesus. Right. I live a good life. I got good things going on. I got to do. No. That truth. Remember, we're, we're mining for truths here that are going to change us and challenge us. But this is a truth that apart from God, apart from Jesus, apart from His ways, we can do nothing. There's nothing of value. There's nothing that we can add to life. There, even in the greatest adventure, even in the greatest life, and even in the greatest thing we can put forth, even if everybody loves us around, uh, loves us uh, that who is that is around us, we cannot do anything good apart from God. That's right. None of it matters. Trial by fire, it all goes away. The only thing that remains is those things that are gold, right? Abide in me, and I in you, as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine. Neither can you, unless you abide in me. Mm -hmm. Love these pictures. I love nature. I love this analogy here. Cut off a branch. I bring it, if I were to bring a cut off a branch, bring it in here. By the time I brought it in here to use that as an analogy, it would be dead, right? I mean, that's how quickly. I mean, cut is dead. Can't produce anything. Can't produce life. Can't reflower itself. So maybe there's some um, thoughtless in here to tell me wrong but differently, but I'll, I'll learn. I know there's more than one plant in the world. We cannot unless we abide. Verse five. Another truth in here is when we get to know our role. Verse 5, again, Jesus repeats this. I am the vine, you are the branches. Allow me to be the source. Know your role. You receive from me. You bear fruit, that's what the Lord is saying. But, but I am your source. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit from apart from me, you can do nothing. Lord, let my life be encompassed by you. May I so adhere myself to who you are, <coughs> submit myself underneath your command, that I would produce fruit that looks like you. We must know our role and know his role. God is the one that brings. Jesus is our source. We submit underneath and produce likewise. Verse 6. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. When we, we at the church, I love thinking about heaven. Anybody else love thinking about heaven? Yeah. Man, I can't wait. It sounds good. It looks good. It's like all good. To be united with Christ forever. To be in that place where all things good abide and live. I mean, my presence with God, healing and wholeness. The sadness and fear gone away. Unity. Oh, I can't wait to live in a place where we have true and lasting peace and unity. I mean, this, mm -hmm. it's amazing. And as a, as a people of God, we always look forward to that. We always have that hope in our, in our heart. We know when we look forward to that hope. But there's another reality that is true. That there is not only a coming living in unity with Christ, but there is coming a day of judgment. 
Jesus' Jesus's invitation doesn't, uh, doesn't stop with just the invitation of blessing the, and, and glory. It's a reminder that there is a truth and a reality of an eternal separation from Him. That's right. And it is, oh my moment, yeah, oh my moment. Oh my moment. God, let me, search me. David said that, right? Search me. May it be true of me that my sword, may it be true of me that I have adhered to you. May it be true of me that my life is submitted underneath you. May it be true of me, Lord, because I know there is a day coming where the withered branch will be cut off. Or the branch that is not producing fruit. And again, how do we produce fruit? We produce fruit by adhering to, by submitting to, by allowing ourselves to abide underneath Christ's rule. We're going to read that here in a second. And so, Lord, May it be true. Have, Lord, allow me to die to myself enough that I would adhere to who you are and be attached to your vine, that I would never be, uh, never be true of me, that I do not produce fruit in coming with or in a step with submitting to you and abiding with you. Every time I think about him, what motivates what motivates me in evangelism, right? What motivates me in sharing this good news is because I know this is coming, right? Why does it motivate me every week to stand up here and to be able to share the gospel? Why does it motivate me? I mean, why? Because I know there's coming a day that this is true, that not only is it true that we can spend eternity with him, we can spend eternity apart from him where every good thing does not exist. What does hell look like? I don't know. You know, we could say the fiery things, we could look at the analogy, and we, I don't know. But I know that every good thing will not exist. The invitation to submit to the Lord is Christ. The invitation to, to be in the Father who created me and who loves me. And that invitation far outweighs anything in my life that I find desirous or find good, right? I mean, it's like, when it really gets down to it, it's a pretty easy decision. I don't want anybody else to be separated from that love. Mm -hmm. I'm motivation. Verse 7. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. I love this. Oneness as a picture that it has here. If my words abide in you and, and, and you abide in my words, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. We know from the Psalms passage that God loves to give us the desires of our heart, but right before that, it tells us to seek Him. Yeah. There's this thing that happens, like, hey, it's not, I don't believe. Uh, Scripture treats prayer like a genie in the bottle kind of mm -hmm. situation, right? Yeah. I was, you know, I, I grew up on a ladder and I enjoyed that. Right. The, youngest one, the youngest one in the room right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's not, it, it's not a, a whatever I wish I get. That's right. Because follow this thought here. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, that's stop there. Mm -hmm. What happens when we begin to read his word, and we're not just read his word, but we say, Lord, I want this to be true of me. Lord, I, I submit underneath what you say. Anybody notice how much your desires and how much your, your wants and how much it just changes? Mm -hmm. And so then, we receive his word, we're abiding him, we adhere to him, and we ask, or our asking changes. And now all of a sudden when we ask, we receive whatever we ask because our asking is not in our own for our, for our own pleasure or for our own desire or for our own utopia. It, 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 it's for God's kingdom and His sake and His favor. And then our prayers change. And when I'm praying for people, I, I'm not just praying for all the good things that happen in their life. I'm praying that Jesus would come into their life and transform them and they get answered. That's why we can pray with confidence for healing in this church. And then like any time there's a healing need, I'm going to pray because I know that God wants to heal today. Yes. 
Right? When somebody says, hey, my, my brother is a, a, an unbeliever and he's going to go a long way and, and he's heading to be cut off, to be thrown into the fire, I can pray with confidence and say, yes, Lord, we pray that his soul yes. would come into the kingdom, would receive the salvation, that he would, I mean, I can pray with confidence. So that I know that those are the things that as I read, that, if I, I'm praying for mercy and I'm praying for injustices. I mean, like, these are things I know, that's what God wants to answer. So we abide in Him, and His words abide in us. Whatever we wish, it will be done for you because your wishes adhere to Him. Your desires adhere to Him. Yeah. We want nothing less. Mm -hmm. Jesus here. I want nothing less than the Father to be glorified. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and now all of a sudden that becomes who I am too. God, may you be glorified. God, would you, God, would you do this so that you can look amazing? By this, my Father is glorified. How do we just get this good news? By this, my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments, and I abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. By this, my Father is glorified, that we bear much fruit. So prove to be my disciples. I mean, it's all, I mean, come on, it's some of the life all going on, you've seen all these connections, all these good things, right? <laughs> Abiding with God. Abiding in Christ is to submit and adhere to all of who He is. And so then it goes in and it fleshes us out by talking about commands. By talking about our obedience to Him. Our walk with the Lord is a walk of, yes sir. I'm teaching, I'm teaching my son now. When a mom gives you a command, yes ma'am. And when I give you an instruction, yes sir. The, the way of walking with the Lord, the way of abiding in Him, the way to produce fruit in your life, mm -hmm. is against all odds, against all desires, against all flesh, and what you want to do, against your own agenda, against everything, you say, yes, sir. That's right. Yes. Yes. I submit to your command. Yes, sir. I am obedient to you. Yes. Yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever you have. Yes. By this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit. Because I love the Father, I did it, is what, you know, I'm on my Because I obeyed the Father, I, I received His love, and, and because I received His love, I passed it on to you. Now, in, if you keep my commands, you will abide in that same relationship. You will live in that. You will have fruit of that. It will be produced in your life. So when I talk about, when we talk about this passage, so many times people say, how do you abide in Christ? And how do you remain in Him? And, and we get a lot into the disciplines, right? So in order to follow after this, this passage, what should we then do? If I want this to be true of me, what then should I do? And many times we get into, all right, we should have a discipline of reading His Word. We should have a discipline of prayer. We should have a discipline of His presence and, and getting into worship and, 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 and being with them. But why? What are the purpose? So, so many times we we jump right to what we should do. And we, we just give me that rule, right? We, we love those rules. We like, give, I don't know, maybe, I, I do. I love the rules. Give me what I need to do. Give me what I need to follow. If, all right, read my Bible. All right, I'll do that. No. If you're reading your Bible, just to read your Bible, I think it's still going to benefit you. It, it's the, all this is good, right? We read His Word to know Him. That's right, yes. If He says, abide in me, if He says, adhere to me, if, he, if it, that's His invitation. Adhere to me, and you're going to produce fruit. Adhere to me, and you're going to be full of joy. We read the Word, not just because we read the Word. It, it, it's a great thing to do. But we read it because this is the revelation of who He is. Yes. Right. 
And so then I read it, and that's when, uh, what is it, uh, James that refers to the Bible as a mirror, all of a sudden I'm reading it and I'm seeing so clearly who God is and who Jesus is, and then it shows back to me who I am and where I still need to submit, where I still need to adhere, where I still need to abide in Him and underneath Him, where I still lack receiving from Him the source. And so, read your Bible. Worship the Lord and spend time in His presence. But so that we know Him and we see Him. Yes. So that now I can ask that question. Remember, I asked the question, where, Lord, reveal to me where you are challenging me to become more like you. Right. So I read this, Lord, show me you. Show me yourself. So I can become like you. So that the fruit of my life tastes like you and looks like you. So that you can receive glory. Because God is all about you. Yes. That's right. Yes. And it ends so beautifully. Remember I opened with the truth. Everything he does is good. Everything he asks of us is good. Verse 11. I have told you this. So that my joy can be complete. He takes pleasure in seeing us come to yes, Him and, 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 and adhere to Him. He takes pleasure in us doing this battle of abiding, doing this struggle that we're doing. Oh, i got to take away me, i got to add in you. I mean, he, he takes joy in this process. But that, so I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. separate this, this desire of God that we would follow His commands and that we would be in His love and that we would be one with Him. We cannot separate that from the fact that God is all good and wants the best for us. Amen. He says, do this. In this, my joy is full. And in this, your joy Obey my commands, and you're going to bring me glory. Amen. I don't want to wash windows. I want to, you know, bring God glory. I want to be the best parent I can be. I, I want to be God, I want to give God glory. God's going to receive glory for my life because I'm abiding by Him. And my, the fruit that is in my life is going to produce such amazing fruit that people are going to see it and say, that's God. Yes. How do we how do we start a revival? How do we start a move of God? How do we help people come to know come to know Christ? I mean, there's a there's a part of preaching, and we'll get into there's a part of evangelism. Yeah, there's a part of uh, it's submitting to Christ. Yeah. The best evangelism we can do. I have a hard time with that because I love preaching, I love sharing. 
is submitting our lives fully to God. Because then, even when we're not even thinking about it, people are experiencing God when they're around us and they're tasting of it. And they're like, that's, that's good. That's different. I don't, that's good. And you know, in those moments when they're actually complimenting you, they're giving praise to God. And then there's actually a worship moment happening right there. That's how I think, you know? I don't know, you know maybe you start to think that way. There's an act, you actually have just a worship service. Somebody said, oh, that looks peaceful, and I don't understand it. They're worshiping God. Yes. It's a worship moment. The invitation this morning is the exact invitation that Christ gave in the passage. Come and adhere to Him. Come and abide by Him. Come and produce much truth for His glory. So application, what do I do, Pastor? What are you asking me to do? I'm asking you to read His Word, to know Him, and to submit to Him. That's, what, that's the ask this morning. That's the application. What are you, if you walk away, what did Pastor want me to do? Pastor wants me to know God. Amen. Know Him. Because whenever we know Him, and then all of a sudden it like, becomes who I am, and it produces in me fruit that remains. It produces much fruit in God's glory. Can we pray this morning?